Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton and I'd like to talk to you today about the dot product, also known as the scalar product. What we're really talking about here is vector multiplication and there are two ways you can multiply vectors. The first, you take a vector, multiply it by another vector and you get a scalar. That's known as the dot product or scalar product and that's what we're going to focus on here today. Secondly, you could also take a vector, multiply it by a vector and get another vector as a product. That's known as the vector product or cross product. And that'll be the subject of a different video. So let's focus on the scalar product for today. What does it really mean? Well, the dot or scalar product of two vectors tells you the component of a given vector in the direction of a second vector. So if we're looking at vector A dotted with vector B, the dot product or scalar product of those two is the component of vector A in the direction of vector B. Another way you can define the dot product, A dot B is equal to magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them, theta. And that's a useful definition as well. So how do you actually go calculate a dot product given two vectors? Well, using unit vector notation, we can look at the a vector defined as the x component of a times i hat, the unit vector in the x direction, plus the y component of a times j hat, the unit vector in the y direction, plus the z component of a times k hat, the unit vector in the z direction. And if you define b the same way, then the dot product of the two is quite simply the product of their x components added to the product of their y components added to the product of their z components. If you look at vector component notation, which I tend to think is a little bit cleaner, a vector is ax, ay, az, all three components lined up, b defined the same way, then a dot b of course has to be the same formula, and it is because you get the same mathematical result. The only difference is a difference in notation. Multiply the x components, add them to the, multi to the product of the y components, add them to the product of the z components. So let's try it out. Find the dot product of the following vectors, where a is equal to 1, 2, 3 in the x, y, z components, and b is 3, 2, 1. Well, in this case, a dotted with b is going to be the product of the x components, 3 times 1, plus 2 times 2, plus 3 times 1, or 10. Let's go a little bit further and see if we can find the angle between a and b. Well, to do that, first thing I want to do is find the magnitudes of a and b. So the magnitude of vector a is just going to be the square root of its x component squared, 1 squared, plus its y component squared, plus its z component squared. 1 squared, 1, plus 2 squared, 4, plus 3 squared, 9, is going to give us the square root of 14. b, likewise, will be the same calculation square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared or the square root of 14. Now I can use my definition that a dot b equals a b cosine theta. a dot b we just found is 10 so 10 equals magnitude of a square root of 14, magnitude of b square root of 14, well square root of 14 times square root of 14 is just 14, times the cosine of theta. Or rearranging this, theta must equal the inverse cosine of 10 fourteenths, or about 44.4 degrees. Let's look at some special dot products. The dot product of perpendicular vectors is always zero. It has to be. If you think about what it means to be a dot product, it's the component of the first vector in the direction of the second. If they're perpendicular, there is no component of the first vector in the direction of the second. Therefore, the dot product of perpendicular vectors is zero. Secondly, the dot product of parallel vectors is just the product of their magnitudes. a dot b equals a b cos theta. Well, if they're parallel, cos theta, theta is going to be 0, cos theta is 1, so all you're left with is a dot b equals magnitude of a, magnitude of b. So parallel vectors, all you have to do is multiply their magnitudes. There are some dot product properties that we should go over as well. The commutative property to begin with, 
a dot b is equal to b dot a. The associative as well, a plus b dotted with c is equal to a dotted with c plus b dotted with c. And when you get to derivatives, the derivative of the quantity a dot b is equal to the derivative of vector a dotted with vector b plus the derivative of vector b dotted with vector a. Let's take a look at one more sample problem before we finish up. If vector a is negative 2 comma 3 and b is 4 comma by, only doing two-dimensional vectors here, find the value of by such that a and b are perpendicular. Well, to do this, the first thing we have to remember is that the dot product of perpendicular vectors is zero. So we're looking for the situation where a dotted with b equals zero. Well, to find the dot product of a and b, we multiply their x components, negative two times four, negative eight, plus the product of their y components, three times by equals zero. All right, a little bit of mathematical rearrangement. 3by equals 8, or by must equal 8 thirds if they are perpendicular. Hopefully that gets you started with the dot product. If you need help or more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.